Welcome back to the So Far So Good Podcast. My name is Christopher Coombs, and on the other side of the suburb, we have... Gaurav Kazanchi, welcome back. That's right, this is our second episode of uh, Distant So Far So Goodness. Yeah, it's really hard to um, do the intro, because I'm used to saying that you're right in front of me. I'm used to so, actually seeing you right in front of me, but it's just that famous red wall that we have, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Oh, well, so far, so good either way. Um, yeah. So, yeah, Gorev is at the headquarters, but unfortunately I'm at home because we can't be, you know, in the same room at the same time. Exactly right, exactly right. I just thought I'd uh, take this one to the headquarters this time. That's right. Uh, so, Chris, let's uh, kick it off with the introductory questions. Do you want to hit it off first? Uh, I'll let you go first for this one. Okay, no worries, no worries. Chris Coombs, actually, my question was in relation to a slight update. Um if that's cool with you. Yeah, go for it. (laughs) (laughs) I don't know where it's going, but let's do it. Oh, it's nothing nothing crazy or major, but it's more of curiosity. Okay. So we mentioned that you're going to try out using beard oil, right? That's right, that's right. And it's actually today you told me that you tried beard oil. Yeah, that's right. So I want to know what... What was the aftermath of the application of the beard oil? Did you actually feel a difference or is your face just oily now? Okay, so basically what we did was uh, I washed it first with special beard shampoo. Wow. So washed all that through it, took that out. And then we put the beard oil in, moved it all around and combed it through the beard. Okay. Um I've got to say, it actually made a massive difference. Yeah, yeah. It definitely definitely helps. And uh, like I said one time, when I did use it, uh, it did help, but I, it was just oily. Maybe, I reckon, I used either too much or didn't comb it in well enough. It does It does stay oily for a while, but I think um, a few hours later it sort of, yeah, got to go better. Down. I um, mean, grows the beard once and then does everything. Beard shampoo, <laughs> man, that's good stuff, good effort. Yeah, well, you gotta you got to... Do your best, you know. Um, it's it, before we did all of that. It was all scraggly, a bit knotted, just you know, like like classic beard. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. then after all that, it was just like silky smooth. It was oily, but um, I guess maybe after a few hours, you could put water through it, and then it would be fine. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, good stuff. I'm I'm very impressed. Your beard is very long right now. Yeah, it's uh, getting there. It's getting there. I think I think we'll post up an uh, update picture or something soon enough. Yeah, at some point, for sure. All right, bro, give me a question. All right, my question to you is, what is your go-to sporting brand in terms of clothing? Uh, So, it can be clothing and shoes, like a mixture, but what would be your go-to, like, sports brand? Now, just a disclaimer, this is no sponsorship whatsoever. I'm just curious to know. Okay, fair call, fair call. Um, look, out of the big three, I guess my favourite would be, you know, Nike. Yeah, um, absolutely. But also out of the big three, I will go for whatever at the time is cheapest or on sale. <laughs> <laughs> In other words, he doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's, it's, yeah, I'm not fast. I'm not fast. But I'm a big fan of... Uh, a lot of the Adidas and Nike shoes, um, especially in my most recent lives. Yeah, uh, I just definitely. It's only only recently I got into the whole runners game. Otherwise, I've more of the casual shoe guy, which I still say I am. But uh, yeah, I appreciate the comfort and the value of runners. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, man, nice. what's yours? What's yours? Out of curiosity. Yeah, mine's Nike, mostly because um, the shoes are generally a bit more, uh, bit more flexy and sometimes a bit wider. Because I've got oh, super wide, like, bony feet. Yeah. So, so I, Nike seem to do the best for my feet. Um, and then in terms of, uh, brand, like, clothing, um, yeah, the Nike clothing's pretty cool. I don't yeah. mind Adidas as well. Um, th- yeah, those two are sort of my go-to. Actually, I do remember thinking one time, I don't know, a couple of years ago, that I was going to buy you shoes for your birthday. But then I ditched the idea because... Your your fitting is just so different. Like yours, yeah. the very specific shoes that fit you well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, just because of my weirdly shaped shoes. feet, I really have to, unfortunately, take it seriously. It's all right, man. It is, <laughs> like it is I can't wear chucks. I cannot wear chucks. Yeah, I, so thin. I think I've only seen you wear them once. You bought them once for a performance, and then you've never worn them since. Yeah, it was in high school. I wore them for like 
a few months, but my feet were just so sore after every time I wore them. Wow. I just couldn't man. do it anymore. Yeah. So I gave well, up. It is what it is, men, but at least you found a solution. That's right. Well, uh, without further ado, uh, let's get into it. So far, so good. Far, so good podcast. We hope your isolation is going well. Yes, and thank you so much for uh, taking some of your time in ISO to tune in to this. And uh, we really do wish that this makes your ISO and day better. Yeah, that's right. Now, I did come across um, something on Facebook relating to isolation. It was a few social distancing slash isolation pickup lines. Okay, okay. So I wanted, to, I wanted to throw them at you and see what you thought and we'll discuss. They're somewhat topical. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> You're right. So I will start with the first one that came up. First one was, if COVID-19 doesn't take you out, can I? Smooth, very smooth, very smooth. Mm. It also could hit some uh, sensitive spots, but uh, <laughs> yeah. I'd say it is quite quite a smooth line. I like that. Yeah, it's not bad. The only problem is you can only take them out in six months' time. Or yeah, however so you'd, long it's going to be. <laughs> you'd want to time that towards the end of the isolation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Good line, though. What, what, what right. else you got? Next one is... Is that hand sanitizer in your pocket, or are you just happy to be within six feet of me? Wow! <laughs> I mean, yeah, that but... one's so good. <laughs> <laughs> pretty good. I mean, it's, it's usually just a small bottle that you keep in your pocket, though. So. <laughs> uh, well, we don't discriminate on size. No, not at all. I mean, podcast. it's just like it, it's impressive that you'd notice it. So good stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. well done, well done. All right, next up is. Since all the public libraries are closed, I'm checking you out instead. That's nice. That's, that's I was going to say that's terrible. No, I like that one because it's <laughs> it's it's not hitting any sensitive spots and because you're mentioning libraries, you automatically sound a bit smart. So, I like that. But when do you check out a library? No, because you, you check out books. <laughs> yeah, I mean <laughs> He's not talking about the, the library as a building. But means. who goes to a library? Like, really? Dude, a lot of people. You have to pretend. You have to... You buy you, you buy a book from a bookshop. Come on. Yeah, but, dude, libraries are very valuable parts of their lives. I highly recommend. I don't go to many, but I highly recommend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. I, I'm not a fan of that one. You can have okay. that one. You I'll can like use that. that one. I'll use that one. All right. Next one is, you can't spell virus without you and I. Not bad, not bad. But it's also like, when are you going to get the opportunity to even say that in context? <laughs> I mean, you have to it be... also just makes no sense anyway. It's not actually a pickup line. It's just literally a fact. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah, it's just a fact. Yeah, good, good call, good call. So, okay, that's at the bottom of my list for now. All right. Um, all right, next one is, Baby, do you need toilet paper? Because I can be your Prince Charming. I don't get it. Neither do I. <laughs> Unless Prince Charming is like a brand of toilet paper in like uh, another part of the world, yeah, maybe. Yeah, let's say it's an American toilet well, paper brand. If but anyone, don't quote us. If anyone knows what that actually means, send us a message because we have no idea at this point. Um, yeah. All right, we'll, we'll move on to the next one. So the next one is, I saw you from across the bar. Stay there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I think that's a reverse pickup line. That's topical social distancing. Yeah, but you wouldn't have the chance to say that because you wouldn't be at a bar. Well, yeah, you're it's, right. It's unless it's after the fact and then you're still getting paranoid about people being you know, near you. I was literally thinking this last week. Imagine when all this ends. Like, people are, people are just... It's put in all our heads that we're all going to just be germaphobes now. Yeah, like I've, we're all I've just gonna so, yeah. wash our hands all the time. We're not gonna touch our face. We're not no, gonna exactly. It's so dude, weird. Nothing's gonna be the same. I don't think, at least for a while. Yeah, it's just gonna be so weird because you're used to just having that interaction with other humans. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You're always hugging, touching, and shaking hands in some sort of way. It's just so weird to think that. Yeah, I, I, I don't think it's gonna be the same for like even when it's all over. At least probably another six months before it actually. 
goes back to the way it was, even if it does. Not yeah. Sure if it will. I totally agree, man. I'm totally on the same boat. Next one is, without you, my life is as empty as a supermarket shelf. Not yeah. bad, not bad, but it's sort yeah. of, it's it's giving me the vibes of you're trying too hard. Mm. That's why I like the library one a lot. Yeah. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> this All one's right, what worse, it, but... Yeah, yeah, this is definitely the worst. This is above the, the virus one, so it's still at the bottom of my list. Yeah. All right, next one would be really good for, um, I guess, like a a way to pick someone up over Tinder, maybe. Okay. Um, and this is the last one I have, by the way. So it's, hey, babe, can I ship you a drink? Oh, yeah. Like, it's, it's all right again. But a lot of ships aren't actually being used at the moment. No, but, like, by ship, it means, like, shipping, you know, like, postage yeah, handling, yeah, yeah, yeah. shipping. Yeah, 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 yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I'm just not a fan. It's just, it's just a bit boring, yeah, just that stupid. one. Yeah, yeah. It's just stupid. So my top two would be the, the first one you said and the library one. Mm, okay. Yeah. I like the hand sanitizer one. Yeah, that one's actually not and, bad as well. And probably the first one as well. Yeah, first one I'm a big fan of. Man, it started off so good and just turned out <laughs> so terrible. No, I'm glad you saved the first one for first. I mean, the best one for first. <laughs> uh, okay, now the uh, the bulk of our episode, actually. Um, so there's been a lot of hectic stuff going on in the world. So... What we thought here at the So Far So Good podcast was let's enlighten everyone with some good news that's happening around the world. And uh, this, this can be anything from immediately recent to, you know, kind of in the recentish past. Um, yeah. But just, you know, good news that's happening. So Good I've news. Got, got, yeah, just good news, you know, just stuff to lift our spirits. And so it's all going to be positive. It's all, it's all positive, optimistic news. Okay. Is this to... Uh sort of help people because the news at the moment is so negative I suppose yeah not even negative but you know just a bit a bit of a downer a lot of the news these days yeah so, absolutely exactly so what I'll uh, what I'll do here is I'll, I'll give you a headline and then I'll give you sort of a, a short summary of the story itself okay sounds good All right. I'm going to start off with one that was pretty much just a headline um, there wasn't really a story attached to it um, it was like a, it was a photo and it was, uh, the source was the happy newspaper. Okay. Okay. So this was a 100 year old tortoise called Diego single handedly saved his own species from extinction by fathering 800 offspring. Whoa. Yeah. That is yeah. insane. Now I know there's a, uh, it takes two, you know, to, to create offspring, a male and a female. But what I'm getting from this headline is that he must have been one of the last males left and you know he just made it with a bunch of females wow that's crazy and I dived into this a bit I did a bit of research so on on like there's a lot of different species of tortoises um, some species can only lay one egg at a time some may lay up to 30 on average it's like 6 to 10 so okay. it, it, it's still a big effort it's not like he you know they laid 100 eggs at a time let's so say basically it, let's say he did an average of 10 each time yeah. And he laid 8,000. That means... 800, well, 800. He didn't... Oh, he laid 800. So he, he fathered 800 offspring. Okay, so that means he obviously had to father it 80 times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> on average. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's, it's a lot of maths, so it's a lot of partners. Good on him, good on him. I guess uh, it doesn't actually sound that impressive since he's 100 years old. Yeah, well... Still, save his species from extinction. I mean, yeah, good Come on him. Come on, this is good news, bro. <laughs> good on him. But when you break it down, it's it's about standard, I suppose. But he single-handedly uh, almost saved his species from extinction. So props to him. Yeah. Well done, Diego. Yeah. Well done, Diego. I wonder if he knew. I wonder if he knew that, he, that the species was, you know, almost yeah, You know extinct. what? Yeah, well, animal instincts are fascinating things I've watched a lot of David Attenborough and I tell you what some of the things they do are just fascinating yeah it really is and without you know they can't com some animals can't really communicate properly so it's just they're just born to know what to do exactly so man. weird animal and nature instincts fascinating oh, stuff fascinating good stuff on him, man yeah alright headline number two this is the headline happy 60th birthday to Madagascar 
world's most biodiverse island gets gift of 60 million trees. So, very positive. Now, here's a short summary of the story. Okay. To celebrate its 60th birthday, the nation of Madagascar held its largest ever tree planting ceremony, with a million seedlings going into the ground in just a few hours after the speech is concluded. The country is preparing to plant a million trees for each year of its six-decade history. Wait, so the country's only been around for 60 years? Yeah, how young does it sound? As in, that's when it was discovered 60 years ago? Discovered or, I don't know, like as a, a, a or free created nation. created as, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't look into that, but I did think the same things. But, you know, here at the SoFi So Good podcast, we don't always follow up with things. Mm, that's right. So, but, so yeah, I guess, I guess we'll never know. over the next uh, 60 years, they'll be planting a million trees each year, and that'll give them 60 million new trees. So that a million is very trees impressive. each year. A million trees each year. Wow, that's yep. crazy. Top notch. That is very good for the environment, and it's just let's good break, all around. Let's break down the maths of that. So if we go a million divided by three hundred sixty-five, whoa, two thousand seven hundred and forty trees planted per day. That's a lot. That is a lot. That's actually. It sounds That's... doable when you break it down to a daily. Does it? Yeah. 2,740 per day. But it won't be just one person doing it. I mean, I'm guessing it would be almost the whole nation. I mean, that's a lot per day, man. Yeah, it's still a lot. Still a lot. That's more impressive than the turtle thing. <laughs> what, because the, sure. the maths is higher? Well, he only had to breed 80 times over 100 years. But that this is, is on, yeah. This okay. is planting two thousand seven hundred and forty trees per day. But but there's more help. Diego was a lone a lone survivor. Oh, One he's man, a ladies man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the next story doesn't actually have a headline because this is my personal report on something that I found very exciting. So it's not real. It's real. It's real. It's a story, but uh, there's no there's no headline. So. <laughs> If... Why don't you just ma- make up your own headline? All right, here's the right headline. Now. Here's the headline. Final season revealed. Final season revealed. Yep. Of okay. what you ask, here it comes. If you are a Star Wars fan, which you are not, Chris, because you don't like movies, but if you are a Star Wars <laughs> fan, uh, and you are a fan of the animated series The Clone Wars... Disney Plus recently has uh, announced that it's making a seventh and final season to link everything together and finish off the series. Uh, Now, for people who don't know, the Clone Wars animated series takes place in between the movies two and three, um, Mm -hmm. and it's actually extremely deep and it's a great show. So far, at time of recording, there have been seven episodes of the final season released, Uh, so I'm assuming they'll be around 20, 22, but who knows. Right. So, great news for us Star Wars fans. Uh, you might not have much to say on that, Chris. <laughs> no, what I'm confused about, is it is it a TV show or is it a series of movies? No, 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 no. So, Star Wars itself is a series of movies, but The Clone yeah. Wars is an animated series, which is a TV show. Ah, uh, okay. Got which you. takes place in between movies number two and three. So, how many seasons has there been of that? So there's been six, and uh, this is the seventh and final season now. Have you watched them all? I've watched them all. I'm actually up to date with a new season as well. Wow. It's so good. It's such a good show. It gives so much depth to the characters. That's surprising. You don't commit to anything. <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I'm the only one out of the two of us that kept our end of the deal. I watched all of the Survivor season. Yeah, but I've got until 31 December 2020. To watch all the Lord of the Rings. Uh, yeah, well, you better hurry up, bro. <laughs> you better hurry up. This year is going fast. Yeah, that's right. That's right. All right. Uh, next headline. A five-year mission to boldly go collecting garbage. Now, it's a bit of a misleading headline, but the story is exciting. Here's the story. The European Space Agency is to launch a multi-armed robotic junk collector into orbit in its first mission to remove space debris that is circulating around the Earth. Wow. Yeah, so uh, over the last 60 years of, you know, space launches and whatnot, there are rocket remains, thousands of, you know, broken satellites and 
hundreds and thousands of fragments cluttering the geostationary and other Earth orbits. So, so are they just sort of floating around the Earth because obviously no gravity and whatnot? So they're just yeah, kind of floating just around. Orbiting around the Earth. There's actually so much junk uh, in the orbit. Wow. I'm pretty sure there's photos of it online. It's it's pretty crazy. And is that human, all human created junk? All human created junk, correct. Wow. Yeah, yeah. So the debris collector will blast off in 2025. And the first okay. mission will be just to grab one single piece of junk. Uh, which is called... It's, it's a thing called Vespa, and that was left by um, one of the European Space Agency's launcher from 2013. And then after that first mission, it hopes to, you know, send it out on more missions to clear out the space debris. So when's the first mission set to be? Uh, 2025. Not sure the exact date. Wow. That's yeah. crazy. So it's a pretty hectic mission. It's a robotic arm junk collector. It sounds quite exciting. Hmm. It sounds quite complex actually yeah it really does so let's yeah. hope question yeah obviously all this space stuff costs a lot of money yeah like, 100% like a lot of money so where does all this money come from <laughs> well look a lot of it are uh, funded by investors and government funded and grants and all of that stuff so they get yeah. enough they get enough to go through with it um I haven't looked into it myself, but there's space agencies all around the world. I don't yeah. think Australia has a space agency. Or it's about to. I'm not too sure, to be honest. Um, mm. But it's something we may or may not follow up. We probably won't, so maybe do your own research. Soft souls. I wouldn't have thought it would. What's this? I wouldn't have thought Australia would have a space agency. Yeah, but I'm surprised they don't, because we are quite advanced. And, you know, we are a first world country as such. Yeah. Yeah, so... Anyway. Okay, they do have one. They do? Yeah, I just Googled it. Have we done any it's called manned... the Australian Space Agency. So <laughs> original. Have we done any launches, or are we more of a research centre? Uh, nah, I'm not too sure. I'd have to read a lot to That's find right. out, I reckon. We may or may not follow up. But absolutely I'll, not. I'll move on to the uh, next headline. Headline is Graduate Invents Plastic Alternative. Speaks for itself. Ooh. But here's a quick summary. Okay. A 23 year old British design graduate has invented a biodegradable material made from fish waste that could one day replace plastic packaging. So, okay. Lucy Hughes used fish offcuts to develop a strong, flexible, and translucent material called Marinatex which looks and feels like a plastic, but it can be disposed of um, like compostable food waste. So, okay. exciting well, times. What exactly is it made from? So, it's made from fish, fish offcuts and waste. So, I think it's sort of like the mucus and the, the scale remnants. The skin. And yeah, yeah that, that, that fish leave behind. So, it's, okay. sort of, it's made from that. So, um, obviously made without animal cruelty and whatnot, uh, but I don't. it's obviously not in complete production. But she yeah. successfully invented it, so good on her. Yeah, that's really good, actually. Yeah. Um, I guess the world is really trying to get rid of plastic. It's tough, though. Yeah, yeah. There's a, there was another headline I read. It's not in my list right now, but it's worth mentioning. Um, Starbucks and I think a few other coffee chains are trying to work on a biodegradable coffee cup. Because right mm. now, they are made of cardboard that can be recycled. But the inside yep. of it is lined with like a plastic film so that you yeah, know, there's no true. leaks. And that doesn't you know, degrade properly. Uh, yeah, so they yeah. are also working on some sort of cup that is good for the environment. Which would really help because um, obviously a lot of people are trying to take keep cups these days. Yeah, it is. When, they, a, when they buy their coffee at work and stuff like that. 100%, 100%. And that's really good. So props to all you guys. Um, yeah, but at the same time, it's really tough. Like it's, it's really hard because, you know, you have to take it everywhere. You have to remember to take it. Yeah, yeah. You it's know, just the off yeah. chance that you don't have it and you go, oh, I'll just buy a coffee this time. Yeah, it's tough. Yeah. It's just one of the things, it's because we're so used to the ease of everything else. It's just like another habit you have to just get used to. So yeah, it's right. good that these big companies are working on things like this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, all right, next headline. Scientists discover a complete protein found nowhere on Earth that fell from space may hint at planet's origin. 
Interesting. Yep. So in a sort of world's first, a complete protein, which is, you know, a critical ingredient for life, and one that could finally solve the mystery of how life on Earth began, was discovered for the first time on an es- extraterrestrial source. So it was actually found on... Um, it was lodged inside a meteorite that fell on the Earth, uh, and it was later confirmed that it was part of a unique, complete protein structure that is not found anywhere else on Earth. Wow. So it could hint at, you know, I don't know, creation of life or creation of Earth itself, um, other scientific stuff, but it's I found that very exciting because I'm a big space fan. As you can tell, I picked out a few space-related headlines. Yeah, so far... Every single headline has been scientific in some way. <laughs> well, every, everything is science, so it makes sense. Technically. Technically, right? Technically. This one's cool. This one's really cool. Teenager uses Lego to build robotic arm. Ooh, that's cool. Yeah. So a guy named David Aguilar has always loved Lego. He was actually born without a right forearm because of a rare genetic condition. Um, okay. And at the age of, age of just nine, he built a rudimentary artificial arm for himself using Lego. Uh, as he got older, he kept working on his prosthetic design. And now he's aged 19, and he is actually studying bioengineering at a university in Barcelona. Um, wow, that's crazy. Yeah, so he's now designed a robotic arm with an electric motor inside, and again, using Lego. So it's he's keeping this whole thing of using Lego to create his own robotic arm and potentially, I guess, maybe creating kits in the future for other people. So how exactly does this work? Like, well, what if it's already got an electric motor in it, Mm -hmm. then why does it matter whether it's Lego or literally any other product, like any other material? Well, I guess that's what his statement is. But, you know, obviously prosthetics cost so much. But a lot of it is to do with... You know, it looking real, um, you know, sort of blending okay. in with your actual skin. Um, those high-end robotic arms are actually connected to your nervous system and you can actually control them with your brain as if it were a normal arm or hand. So, wow. yeah, so those are obviously extremely expensive. Surgery is quite extensive. Um, so what he's done is just sort of a, a sort of his way of creating a prosthetic arm that is sort of, you know, functional, which is very impressive. Man. You can DIY anything these days. <laughs> <laughs> no. Good on him, man. Good on him. That is I wonder impressive. how much a prosthetic arm would actually cost. They're in the, what, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands? They've, they're not cheap at all. I'm just doing a quick Google here. Um, this is some American website. Um, for patients without health insurance, a prosthetic arm t- typically costs less than $5,000. What? Um, up to $10,000 for a... Functional arm. Okay. So okay. for cosmetic arm would be about 5000 And what about the... functional arm would be about 10000 It's actually... Um, and then is that... Does a functional include... I don't know. I'm probably getting... Okay. And then for a fully advanced myoelectrical arm, whatever the hell that means. Yep. Um, that is between 20000 to to 100000 Oh, gee, gee. So... Um, where, yeah, I mean, it, I guess depends on how good of an arm you need, but look, if you can make it out of Lego, if you can put a motor in it, you can DIY it, why not? Yeah, why not? I mean, it works. If it works, it works. Yeah, I'll give it to him, man. That's, that's pretty awesome. All right. This is uh, the next one. Luxembourg to make public transport free. Uh, really? Itself. Yeah. So Luxembourg intends to become the first country in the world to scrap fares on all public transport uh, to mainly reduce traffic congestion around the country. Um, and I think that's okay. a great, a great initiative to take because, especially here in Australia, public transport is not very cheap. If you no, it's not. If you if you need to go from the suburbs to the city and back for work, for example, it's about uh, it's about uh, was it eight dollars a day? It's, yeah, yeah, it's about, it's, a, oh, yeah, it's about eight dollars a day. Eight dollars a day, yeah. So if you add that up, man, it's, it adds up. It adds it up. Really it's about, does. what, you know, 40 plus a week, and then, you 40, know. $40 a week, if you go by, times that by 52 weeks, it's two grand a year just to get on the train. To yeah. Work and back. Yeah, exactly right. And if you don't live close to the station, you've also got to drive to the station or get dropped off to the station, um, and then there's petrol costs on top of that. Look, it's just, it's not very, it's not over the top uh, but it's it's not the cheapest 
It's certainly not free, so uh, I think it should be. I think public transport should be available to all. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how they fund that. I guess the government will take initiative. Yeah, well, let's, uh, let's hope that trend passes along to other countries. 100%, hint, hint, and it's good, it's good It's good for us travellers as well. Yeah, exactly. If we, you know, if we went to stay there for a week or something like that, yeah, we'd be going on trains and yeah. I guess in other parts of Europe, like when we were in uh, Spain, um, yeah, Caitlin and I took a train to uh, this nice beach area. I think it was from Barcelona. Yeah, that was in um, Barcelona. Yeah, yeah, it was about twenty minutes or half an hour, and I think it ended up costing us about twenty euro each, which the Australian dollars was just over. 30 bucks each. That That's is just ridiculous, isn't it? Not very cheap at all. I actually expected better when you started that story. I thought it was going to be a happy one. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty ridiculous when you think about it. Look, yeah, I mean, like, I've never thought of going to Luxembourg, but maybe uh, now I'll start thinking about going to Luxembourg. <laughs> Let's yeah. see where we go. Let's do it. All right. Uh, headline number nine. It is Breaking an Addiction. Uh Okay. Suspense. So here's the story. Three entrepreneurs who met at Copenhagen Business School, uh, their names are Matt Matheson, uh, Florian Winder, and... Wait, did you say Matt Matheson? Yeah. Matt... His name's what? actually Matt Matheson. Yeah. <laughs> oh, come on. Yeah. Florian Winder, was... or Winder, and uh, Vinoth Vinaya have launched an app to combat smartphone addiction. P- oh, okay. Yeah, particularly among students. Uh, the app Wait, is... Wait, was that launched an app? Yeah, 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 yeah. They've launched an app. To... A little, little ironic, but... It is, it is ironic, it. but it makes sense. I'll explain it. The app is called Hold, and it tracks how much time you don't interact with your phone, and you are rewarded points for the time you do not use your phone. You can then redeem these points for products like movie tickets and things like that. So, Dude, that is solid. I think that's a great, uh, great initiative, and that is a really good one. It's sort of a win-win situation, you know. You spend more time off your phone, um, and then you get rewarded for it. That's interesting. Have we got a name for the app, or is it out yet? It's called or? Hold. I don't know if it's international, um, but we can suss it out. Yeah, definitely. H O L D Hold. That would be pretty good. I wonder what the actual, you know, requirements would be. Like, do you get points for the eight hours that you're sleeping? <laughs> probably not. Yeah, probably not. It probably detects. You probably choose your time zone. But imagine that, stitching it up. I'll just say I live in America and get all sleeping points. Man, I would really struggle with that. Are you, are you always <laughs> on I'm, your phone? I'm on my phone at work, like, all day. It, like, for work purposes? Uh, both. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you've got to do what you've got to do, man. Uh, I'm yeah, on it for a, a lot of the. I'm on it quite a bit as well, so yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's not. I mean, I don't know if it's necessarily an addiction for every person, but no, I was going to um, say it's not always bad. Um, I guess it's just you know, it's just a nice thing to have. I guess you know, not being on it all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. I mean, I use it for pretty much everything. Like you know. Yeah. If I'm bored, if I want to, you know, if I'm having a shower, I'm playing music or playing a video off my phone to listen to. Yeah. I mean, so, well, that's why they're there. They're there for our convenience and entertainment. And, you know, like a lot of people uh, say, you know, they've they've literally become an extension of our bodies. So, yeah, you know, they really have. It's just uh, it's just how it is these days. But yeah, I guess if there's something there to help people who feel like it is an addiction, then it's there. It's called hold. I uh, don't know if it's international, don't know if it's completely live yet, but it's worth a check out. Yeah, for sure. All right, our 10th and final headline for this episode. World's first 3D printed neighborhood is built in Mexico. What? Yeah. So a whole neighborhood 3D printed. So it's like a cardboard cutout. Uh, yeah. Wait, you know how 3D printers like print using that? special plastic material yeah yeah so it's made from that so it's it just looks it I don't get it okay so Explain. Uh, here's the here's the story <laughs> summary 
Rural families in the region of Tabasco in South Mexico have been given new homes thanks to a project that is building the world's first 3D printed neighborhood. It is the work of US based nonprofit New Story, which has partnered with a 3D printing technology company to build a 500 square feet homes for a community living in poverty. So each house has two bedrooms plus a living room, a kitchen, and a bathroom. Uh, they have been designed to withstand, you know, earthquake, seismic activity, um, and New Story aims to end global homelessness and is using the 3D printing technology to build homes quickly at scale. The project will eventually create 50 homes there in Tabasco, Mexico. Okay, so first question I have about that. Yeah. Is that where Tabasco sauce is made? <laughs> <laughs> I had the exact same thought, uh, and I'm just going to go off a loop and say probably, but I, I have not checked. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I thought, I was really <laughs> I was really struggling to pay attention to the rest of it after that. <laughs> uh, too good. Um, okay, so next thing is, all right, so they're, pre- they're basically printing homes. Yeah, so... So what are they, what material is this? Like, how does, how does it work? So it is that same sort of special plastic material. Um, yep. but it's, it's built in parts and it's obviously still insulated with stuff. So it's like the okay. shell is 3d printed and then everything else is sort of insulated inside. And then the stuff is in there. I'll actually send you some. So are they still, are they still using wood? No, no. Build no wood. So no. I'll send you pictures of so the, the actual wall homes. is literally plastic. So it looks like yeah. a, it looks like a squared off dome kind of look. Um, okay. it actually looks quite cool. And then, yeah, like I said, each uh, 3D printed home has two bedrooms, a living room and a kitchen, um, and a bathroom, of course. Uh, and wow. yeah, and it's fully functional. Uh, can withstand seismic activity, obviously weatherproof and whatnot, so very good. All right, well, send me... We'll try and find some good photos and maybe post them up on the SoFast So Good Instagram so everyone can have a look and see what they're like, because that sounds quite interesting and a good cause as well, because they're obviously trying to stop homelessness. Exactly, awesome. great cause. So yeah, the um, non-for-profit organisation was called New Story, um, and like, yeah, like I said in the article, uh, they aim to end world homelessness, and I think this is a great start and a great initiative. So yeah, good on them. really good. Good on them. That yeah. is a, and it's, it's very innovative as well, so, you know, really using modern technology to its best uses. Which is what we need it for. Exactly right. You know, a lot of people are using technology and, you know, ruining the environment or the earth in some way. But this one, this is, this is next level. <laughs> I mean, absolutely right. It's like, it's like, you're almost quoting Star Wars itself, man. It's, there's, <laughs> there's really? the dark side and there's the light side. You can, you can choose, you can choose which one. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> the light side it is, I guess. <laughs> yeah, absolutely right. All right. Well, the So Far So Good podcast definitely supports this cause. So, yeah. Very good news story to hear. That good final... You saved the best for last, didn't you? Yeah, well, that's exactly how I do it, man. Uh, unlike you, where you you said the best pickup line first, <laughs> I saved uh, one of the best news stories for last. So, I think yeah. we've both done well on our list this episode, overall. Congrats. Yeah, very Props nice. Props to both very of nice. us. Uh, That's but right. now, thank you guys so much for tuning in to the So Far So Good podcast this week. It's been good having you on. I hope it helped uh, cure 40 minutes of your boredom through isolation. Um, stay safe. Stay healthy. Keep exercising even though it's tough. It's In Australia, it's starting to get quite cold yep, as well. So absolutely right. Actually, Chris. Try and keep it up. That reminds me. I actually started uh, home workouts. Really? Yeah, man. Very good. As we are very currently good. speaking, my body is very sore. <laughs> so Well, it's been a while. It has it's been, been a while. About 26 years. <laughs> so what nonsense. <laughs> uh, but no, that's yeah. good. That's really good. Uh, well, uh, maybe we'll discuss the home workouts a little bit further in the next episode. We can. And as a special, because uh, we didn't mention it at all, except for so far so good podcast Instagram. Happy birthday, Chris, for early this week. Uh, oh, thank you very much. It was it was riveting. Um, <laughs> I saw you put up the post on Instagram as well, so thanks for that. That's right. Appreciate that one. Happy birthday, bro. Uh, we all love you, and uh, take care. And we will catch you on the next episode. Goodbye. Uh, holy damn, I lost my question, bro. Give me a sec. <laughs> I didn't even have one yet. That's why I was like, I'll let you go first. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, wait. I have my other notes open. Yeah, boy.
Are we going to keep recording? Yeah, just keep it recording. Sweet. Uh, but do you have any little thing to mention, or do you want me to just go into mine? No, nah, no, nah, go for it, bro. Alright. So once again, thank you guys for tuning into the So Far So Good podcast. We hope your isolation is going well. <laughs> my bad, my bad. <laughs> I thought you were going to say something after that. <laughs> okay, say that say again. Say that, I'll continue on. Yeah. Yeah. All right, next one up we have. Without you in... Hang on. Damn it. Can you... Yeah, yeah, I'll fix that. It. All right. It's all right, but then again, ships, cruise ships aren't really going. I guess passenger, like ships that ship things are still going. But, yeah, Wait. I'm not too much of a fan of that one either. Wait, what? So, can you say that again? <laughs> <laughs> all because I heard is ship. it's like, like can, so I, just... can I ship you a drink? A 23-year-old British design graduate has invented a biodegradable... I'll say it again. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here we go. Uh... Yo. Yo, sorry, I actually hung up. No, it's alright, right. Are you still recording? Uh, yeah, you? Yeah, sweet. Okay, yeah. perfect. Uh, did you hear the end of the story? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. sweet. Okay, go. Well, uh, yeah, the So Far So Good podcast definitely... Um, uh, Bloody hell, what's the word I'm looking for? I've no idea what you're going to say, bro. <laughs> oh, that's right.